Hello everybody and welcome back to Naveswell Farm Extended. As you can see the contractors are here with their JCB wheel loader. They're currently clamping the pit, which we started yesterday and we'll be finishing today. Uh, right, so what we need to do, we need to think of a, a new idea for tipping the silage into the pit. Because obviously if that wheel loader is there, it's not going to uh, get out the way of us basically. Ah, it's going to need four wheel drive. There we go. Um, and yeah, basically, um, we just need to have a new way of tipping the trailer into there without actually going to that sort of complex. And the way of doing that, as far as I can see, is with the conveyor belt mod. So that's what I'm going to go and get today. We do have it. Oh, it's slipping again. Um, four wheel drive obviously wasn't good enough for it, so I'll sort it out in a second. So that is the contractors sorted out. They should be now okay for the rest of the episode, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> it's probably... Oh. I can't believe it. It's flashed up again saying it's slipping. Well, um, I'm sure... It, oh, there we go. It sorted itself out. Good. It was just trying to annoy me. Here is the conveyor. So we'll get it taken over to the pit. It can be on the outside of it. And we'll tip into it. And it should, if this all goes to plan, it should sort of um, transfer it over from the trailer into there without us having to drive into the area to uh, or basically get in the way. But that's only if it goes to plan. Now today we will be actually finishing this maze harvest because I'm not going to do it over three episodes. It's just one field. Although it is quite a slow job, there is no reason at all why we can't finish it today. Most of it will be done off screen, but I'll try and do most of the interesting bits on screen. Uh, I've actually just looked at the JCB and have discovered the reason why it's slipping. Basically, it's just because we haven't got enough in there. It's very dense at the back, but nothing really at the front, so it's very steep. So, uh, when we get the next load tips, it will be fine. Okay, I've made life a little bit tricky here, because I have put the case in the way. Might be easy if I move it, but let's just see if we can do it first of all. Oh, I just about crept in front of the tractor. Okay, so if we get it unfolded, then we'll be able to begin. Press J for this, and it does it all for you. It's quite an easy mod to use. Yeah, you can see there, uh, the course is set to go right up to the back, but because it's so steep at the top, and not very steep at the front, it's just finding it a little bit tricky. But when we get the next load tipped, it will be fine. So we'll raise it up, and it needs to pan across to the left-hand side. We might have to adjust ourselves in a second. Or too far there. There we go. It's okay. Yeah, we'll just shuffle a bit closer. And uh, unlike Farming Simulator 17, this will only fill, it'll, it'll fill one part of the plane in one go. It won't fill where you're actually tipping it. Uh, the silage pits have been dramatically improved for FS17, which is very good news. So we'll spin round and reattach. There we go. Right, next load. Off we go. So, if everything now goes to plan, this should be a very slick operation. Hopefully, um, I've said it before, and it hasn't always worked. It worked before when I say this, but yes, I'm hoping uh, today. Now that all of those little uh, niggly problems are out of the way, we should be able to get this done very efficiently, very quickly, and it should look pretty good on camera too. That is the plan. So the worker for the harvester is already up here, waiting for us. So we can't dither about. Obviously, because we've got contractors in, um, it does cost us quite a bit of money to do this, but because we're in real time, it is very, very helpful. If we were playing it like 60 times, or maybe even 120 times, it would be very costly. So, yeah, real time is the way forward, definitely. Unless you're selling silage, then you need to speed up time, because it bungs up, and uh, it doesn't process it very quickly. Top. and let's start yep 
yeah, really looking forward to uh, putting my theory into practice um, because I, I, I still reckon that when we tip this first load into the conveyor, providing it will work, the uh, wheel loader shouldn't get stuck again. I hope. If it does get stuck, well, I've obviously messed up somewhere, but yeah, pretty sure. You can see a bale over there. There is a bale in the cultivated field. One of my runaway bales, that's where it got to, from field number... This one here, what is this one? 34. All the way from field 34. And it's ended up over there. I always find from the above view it's, it's quite interesting to see. But also it makes the crop look very sparse. When you're down below, it's quite dense, but yeah. Uh, from above, it's a very sparse crop. But it's not really playing much of an effect on our productivity. We're getting a fair bit off of this. However, it has to be said, we're not really getting too much compared to yesterday. The reason for this is because I have now removed the soil management mod for the probably fourth time. Whenever I do Thornton, I always have to put it back on there and then tend to forget removing it again. But today it's removed and yes, it, it does make a massive difference, it's crazy. If you get soil mod right, what a good mod it is. Yeah, this is crazy. I can't believe the difference. Because the soil mod values were, I think they were the default because I had just reinstalled this again. Um, they were showing about times four and times two for the nutrition, which isn't amazing, but it's okay. But what a difference it makes. It's absolutely unbelievable. I suppose that this crop isn't fertilized because we didn't plant it. So that could be quite a large contributing factor. As you'll all know, if you don't fertilize your crops in the default version of FS, uh, yeah, you don't really get too much out of it. Not even 50% full. We've almost gone around once. Before we were getting like just over a third around the field. I've just changed the setting of the harvester to uh, up and down the field rather than round in a circle. Otherwise the whole video is just going to be of the harvester turning around. Which nobody really wants to see. But yeah, this is a good harvester. The Class Jaguar, as well, uh, would love to give it a go. I don't know if we're going to have a chance now, actually, before the end of... Uh, well, there's no end to FS15, but you know, before the release of 17. I will most likely be uh, pretty much just doing 17 once it's released. But it might come back to 15. I mean, we might have to finish this series off, actually. So yeah. It won't be a straight stop, necessarily. Ninety-six percent full. Shame we're at the far end, because it means we have to travel further. Um, but yeah, you can see how many rows we've done. This is the fifth row. And uh, we still, well, we've just filled it. Just filled the trailer. Which isn't exactly impressive. So that really does put into perspective how good or bad soil mod can be. Obviously, uh, as I just explained, if you do it really well, you can make an absolute fortune. But obviously, if you're not really too dedicated to it, or you forget, like I did do a few times, um, yes, it, it can be not very good at all. Now, um, because we've removed soil mod, we have no fertilizer on here. This is the bare minimum. We're just about scraping something off the field. Quite interesting, I'm actually glad that I forgot to remove soil mod yesterday. Because it just really does show you how good it can be. Alright, so we need to go right out of here. Hopefully there's not too much traffic. There is a car. Can't see left. There we go. 
and the JCB should be freed from its slipping position. That is a good load. Now the only issue I have here is uh, reversing up to the conveyor. I suppose we could re reverse around the corner but it just depends on where this invisible barrier is. Um, yes, that is exactly where it is. Well, it should be possible. Just about. Yeah, that's, that's easy enough. Now, will it work after all this? Uh, don't crash, don't crash. Okay, I think it switched off. So we'll just sort that out. Is it switched off, or is it just not going to unload into the pit? Ah, uh, yes. That is an issue. Um, yeah, you'd have thought it would actually work. I, I thought it would do. But it might be a total failure. The idea is alright, but... Yeah, when you actually uh, try and do it, it doesn't seem to be recognising that there is a pit there. Which is a shame. We could put it into a placeable heap, but then it wouldn't be in the pit. So, I don't know. That's... this is a tricky situation. I might just have to reverse into here then, I suppose. We'll just have to do it this way. Oh well, the idea was there. Looking at it, it doesn't seem so bad. Because uh, if it's going to keep getting stuck, there'll be plenty of space for us to get in here. Oh no, don't crash into us. Don't just force your way through. Unbelievable. Well, it is possible. That has sort of proved it. Oh, great. Useless driver. You go back up there. Where you can't hurt anyone. And we'll get back to the field. Yeah, that's way better. It can drive properly over it. Okay, so here we are back in the field. Getting the next load. And yes, the uh, JCB has not stopped again. Very good news. So uh, my, my theory there was right. But my theory with the conveyor, obviously not quite right. Well, it flashed up then saying something. I'm not sure what exactly. Very quick. I'm actually surprised the conveyor didn't unload into there, because it is sort of a, a noticeable unload area. But yeah, obviously we can't change it, so it's just the way it is. Whilst we're getting such a, a small amount of silage off this field, um, it's looking likely we're going to only need one more trailer after this, and we'll be done. It's going to be as quick as that, unfortunately. I was sort of anticipating this episode to go on for a while, but... Yeah, it's going very quickly. We could always start another field another day. Um, but yeah, I suppose in a way it's a good thing, but in other ways it's not, because we're not going to have half as much silage. But if you have too much, it could be unrealistic. So, the money I mean. The money when you sell it again could be a bit unrealistic if you have too much. I've just worked out what the flashing blue thing is, just above the minimap where the course play details appear, the course play notifications. It's saying very quickly that the uh, waiting point has been reached. There is a waiting point in the pit. That is when it's told to reverse again. And basically all it's doing is getting to that. That's why it's flashing up. Nothing too exciting. So from that row, that pass of the field, I think I think that was roughly 20 to 25 percent of the trailer. Nothing too impressive, but it does mean that in this in this pass we should fill it, so we'll be in a perfect position to then leave the field and get back to the yard very quickly. That's the plan. And uh, yeah, because we've got the JCB, oh, hang on, it has got confused. We need to go a bit closer. There we go. Yeah, because the JCB is in the yard currently, clamping the pit, um, it means that when we get 
the last load in there, it will only take probably a minute or two to finish off. Then we'll be able to cover it over and the fermentation process can begin. Three percent left. I think I'm going to take it this time, even if it isn't a hundred percent. That that is two liters off. I think we're definitely going to take it. That can turn around if it can do. It's a bit far away from the next row, but hopefully we'll be able to. And we'll head back over this very bumpy track. That is so bumpy. Right, um, so that is getting on very well. What a very dense tyre mark it's leaving. I'm going over the same point for the last 20 minutes. Let's just hope our timing is good and we'll be able to reverse in without crashing. I'm not really worried about me crashing, it's more that thing reversing into me. I know there is a post there. The post there, okay. I'm more concerned about me crashing now. Uh, that's not really gone to plan. I was hoping to get in there when it goes up, so we can see the buck rake. The buck rake is folded up, it's just there for show, really. Um, it's a shame it doesn't work correctly because it doesn't push the, the uh, unfermented silage, it doesn't push the chaff, it only pushes the fermented silage. Uh, but we'll just squeeze up here, very close. But either way, that's good. Very good. And uh, if we can squeeze around the back, hopefully. I was hoping it would move forwards, but it might be trying to move backwards. Yep, I think we're okay. Good. Right, brilliant. We'll just spin around and we'll get the final load. Suppose if we move the Ford tractor, we'll be able to go in the loop. I'm going to put it in the way. But it did manage to turn around. Very good. Auto combine is good for that. And um, yeah, this is going to be uh, probably only about 60% of the trailer if we're lucky. Got to stay positive though. We've got to stay as positive as possible. This is our main income. We should fit this final bit in, the last load, the last pass, yeah no problem at all. That is uh, five rows of maize, it's currently taking in about, what is that, seven? It's very good. Big header. Yeah, thought I was being a bit optimistic with 60% because we're only on 32 currently. I don't think we're going to get almost another 30% in here, between here and the end of the field. But it will certainly fit it in, in the header's width, which is good. We're going to be going backwards and forwards for a tiny little bit. And there is only 17 minutes left on the rent of the harvester. I'm kind of um, treating it as a contractor though. So rental times and prices don't matter so much. We don't own the harvester. working well, just a tiny bit left at this end and then we will be done and we're on 39%. Let's see if we can get 40%. There he goes. Don't blink. There we go. And we didn't get 40%. Oh dear. Wow, the work has packed up and gone home already. He must have been very fed up, or she. He looked like a he through the window. Um, right, so what we need to do is go and tip this final load, get it clamped and then finally get the sheeting over to get it fermenting. Ah, oh, good thing, it's, it's slipping. So we'll be able to get in there, tip and get out without being crashed into for once. Oh no, it's coming. Uh, get out of the way of it. Crazy thing. But there we go, we are done. That is our maize harvest done for this year on the farm. Um, yes, how, how is it doing? 
it is 86% compacted, 87%. And amazingly, the whole pit is 53% full, which is 215,313 litres. Very impressive. You can see it compacting. It's also uh, getting stuck. It refuses to put four-wheel drive on for some reason. I think we'll probably take over. We'll be able to do it a fair bit better. Two percent, and it's done. So let's just reverse out of the way, and we will cover it over. Here it goes. Is it black or white sheeting? This one is black, and it's got all the weights on as well. They're like um, they're like plastic bags filled with weights. Almost as if they could hang on a shelf in a retail store. <laughs> uh, interesting. I suppose that is a known method. This must be how they do it. So, uh, anyway, there we go. Fermenting 1%. It's already started. That's it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. We'll be back tomorrow with something else. I'm not quite sure what yet, but it will be farming simulated nonetheless. So until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye for now.